Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at program changes on Halion Sonic. So Halion Sonic is the free synthesizer which comes with Steinberg's various uh, bits of software. So you get it with Cubase, you get it with Dorico. It has different amounts of content on different platforms and different versions. What you actually get if you just download it for free, I'm not entirely certain on it. It's something I'm going to look into, but it does involve me having a brand new fresh computer to look at it just to make sure it's not sneaked anything round the back door. Anyway, today's video is about program changes. Now, for those of you who are of a certain age, you'll know what program changes are. They're a MIDI message which was designed to allow you to control the patch which any synthesizer was playing. So you could send it a program change and then it would change the sound on that synthesizer. That was sort of standardized by General MIDI, which had a map of program changes for more sort of let's say more mundane instruments that the general MIDI map involved. So that allowed you to know that if you were plugged into a general MIDI model, if you sent program change one, you would always get an acoustic piano. If you sent program change 49, you'd always get a string ensemble, that kind of thing. So that allowed MIDI files, which a lot of people know about, to actually exist and be sane. So you would always get the right sounds at the right time, etc. 128 program changes wasn't really enough. So a uh, modification to that was a thing called banks. So you, where you could have a bank change message, which would allow you to select, let's say, patch number five, and then bank pretty much whatever. And then you could have a variation on that sound. So it all became rather complicated. With the advent of software synths on screen, it became much easier because you just pick them from a menu, which is what most people are used to. But there are times when you might want to use program changes. I had a request about it. I thought I'd look into it and I found it. One of those things you can kind of solve if you want to, but you have to be kind of willful about it. So that's what we're going to look at. So let's first open up Halion Sonic. And here it is in all its uh, glory. And the page we're interested in is the options page over on the right hand side of this set of gray tabs. So you click that. And then on the global sub page, I guess you'd call it, we've got program changes. So this is what it defaults to. So here program changes are off. Now, if we then try and send it a program change message, it will just ignore them. But we're going to try and do that anyway, because I'm into proving things not working and that kind of stuff. So let's just open up this. Now, here I have a blank two bar part. And if we open it up, there's there's nothing in there. And the reason is the default is the key editor. The key editor isn't that helpful in this situation. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to go to MIDI and then open the list editor. So the list editor is where we're at for this. So if you want to create this yourself, it's fairly straightforward. But I'm just going to delete that one that's already in there. What you need to do is to click up here and pick what you're going to insert. Now, by default, it will be notes. So if you click in this grid with a pencil tool, you will create notes, but we're going to change the program change here and then bar one beat two, just going to grab the pencil, click that there, and you can see we've inserted a program change. If we we're on something else, if we were on, well, let's go different, let's go after touch. So if we were going to click that there, you can see we've inserted after touch, etc. So you can edit exactly what you're putting in nice and easily, but we are interested in program changes. So this is the number of the program change. So this is what we're sending. So this is sending program change number one. And if we change this here by clicking and dragging up and down, you can see Halion Sonic is getting it. If you look at that little indicator there as I move this up and down, Halion Sonic is getting the message, but it's ignoring it. So this is the default. So if you have some MIDI data with program change in, it will just ignore it it will set it to the sound that it's on. And I can just demonstrate that further. It really is ignoring it. Let's put it on the appropriately named tenuous task. We won't worry about the fact the audio files are missing because I've had to delete a bunch of stuff to do some testing. If we open this up again in the list editor, let's change this. You can see it's not changing tenuous task at all. That's not moving whatsoever. So that's the default. It will just ignore those. Now, there is a second mode, which we're going to look at on the second track, and that is GM mode. So once more, if we open this particular instrument up, we're on the options and global tabs here. If I change 
program changes here. So we've got GM mode. Look on the left-hand side of the screen. So look here what happens when I do that. It tells me it's going to replace the currently loaded multi. There's not really a multi, but it's being helpful. And then it loads them up here. So we start off with all grand pianos apart from a GM kit here. Now, once more, I'm going to just move this over to the right hand side. And then on this track here, I'm going to open this part up in the list editor. And now if I send a program change, so let's send program change 49 and we should get strings. We can see we get string ensemble one. If I change it to 17, get drawbar organ, we've got variations, etc. The general MIDI map is easy enough to find on the internet. It's in my book as well, if you're interested in that and you want to look further into MIDI. Obviously, this has 16 channels available. We're not going to look into it any more than the fact that if we changed the channel that this was on, so if we change this here to let's say channel two. And now we open this up again in the list editor. So now I'm sending on channel two. So that's changed that to program change 10, glockenspiel, etc. So you can see that that works. And that's as you'd expect, because it's general MIDI mode. The problem with this is it only gives you access to the general MIDI sound. So if we have a look here and just search for GM, we can see the list of general MIDI sounds and there's no surprises in here. It's just all the sounds you'd expect, plus a few drum kits, which you need to load up manually. As far as I'm aware, they don't seem to respond to the appropriate general MIDI program changes. There may be more you need to send, but I've, I've only looked as far as sending the right program changes and they don't actually work on channel 10, but there we go. So this is as you'd expect. The problem with this, of course, is if you don't like these sounds, you want something more advanced, you're stuck with them if you want to use program changes. So let's say you wanted to do this as some kind of live thing where you were changing the sound from your controller keyboard or programming them into a track, that kind of thing, then this would only be fairly limited. There is a way around this, however, now, just before we move off to this, I just want to look at one more thing, which is sending information from MIDI tracks. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed there's a MIDI track at the bottom of this project. Now, if you've not used MIDI tracks, you may not notice that the inspector is slightly different when you're using MIDI than when you're using an instrument track. So, for instance, if we look at this Halion Sonic here, if we click in this box here, we can see it's already saying programs and we get the program select here. If we go on a MIDI track, we get bank selector and program selector. So this is what I was talking about earlier on in the video that we've got 128 possible programs and we've got 16,000 and change in the bank selection. So there's lots of possibilities here. Whether or not your synth responds to that is a different thing. Now you may be thinking, well, instead of faffing around with the list editor, I can just send this program change here to Halion Sonic. But unfortunately you can't because when you change the output here, so if we change it to any of these Halion Sonics, it's clever and it realizes you want the program selector there. So that doesn't let you do that. Now you may be thinking there's another workaround so those of you are really old school, if we go back to not connected here. Now, if you go into MIDI sends, this was the old school way you could send something to multiple channels. So you just enable this and you'd put Halion Sonic GM as your output there on channel one. So anything that's coming on this channel is also getting sent on that. The downside of that, so we can see if I play my keyboard here, it's coming out of this, but it's also coming out of Halion Sonic GM as we've called it there. Now, if, I go back to the inspector here, you think, yeah, I'm going to send a program change. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, so the program changes don't get sent over MIDI sends. So we don't get that, which is a, a little bit disappointing. I was a little bit saddened when I found that that's the case. But there you go. So that will save you chasing down that blind alley if you're thinking, well, this is a way to send program changes. I think it used to be a long time ago, but it definitely doesn't work now. So uh, sadness ensues. So here we have our third and final Halion Sonic. So if we change to multi-mode here, nothing seems to happen. So we don't get a whole cavalcade 
happening here. But what's actually happening is that we need to use the multi-page here. Now, you may never have encountered this. Uh, it's not something you probably use uh, during the normal course of things unless you get seriously into Halley and Sonic because I think most people just select the programs here. But let's just take a look at some preset ones and also how you would create your own. So first thing I'm going to do is go to this multi-slot here. So in the first slot, name zero. Just going to pick up anything. So let's pick up upright and piano. So this has got a bass and piano. So it's got a bass on the first channel. And then on the second channel. So we've got a split. And then we've got piano above that. So you'd have bass in your left hand and piano in your right. And we can see that split here. So that's that's fairly straightforward to set up, etc. But the most important thing about this multi is it will respond to program changes. So this responds to program change one. If we load up a different one in the second slot. So let's load up string quartet. So now if we're on string quartet, we can change to the next multi here. So here we've got our string quartet. Etc. We can access different MIDI channels if we want, but I'm just going to stick with uh, channel one at the moment. I'm not going to play around with anything because this is the kind of thing you're thinking of for live performance. Now, if we send a program change to this one, so let's just open this up in the list editor. We can see if we go to program change one, send that again. So program change one has activated multi zero so this is slightly confusing because it's numbered starting zero so the actual data that's sent for nerds is is zero to 127 but humans interpret it as one to 128 so there's there's always the potential for this disparity and weirdly they've chosen to expose it here which is slightly strange but if we send program change two slightly accurately when we get string quartet so this is the key to being able to change these sounds with program changes the issue you've got of course is that unless you stick with the pre-programmed multis uh, you're not going to get the sounds that you want so what we're going to look at now is just how you create a single patch multi and save it and then you should be able to knock yourself out with program changes to your heart's content in Halley and Sonic 7 So the first thing you're going to want to do is to remove these preset ones if you've just been playing around with them. Now, you might foolishly click here multiple times. I mean, who would do that? You know, you think that's where you'd get rid of it. You try right clicking. No, nope, that's not what works. The way to get rid of this is this drop down menu here. Yeah, I, I, I really think some of the user interface here has just been sort of forgotten about or it's the kind of thing where it's like if you know, you know, but divining it is not necessarily that it's straightforward this would make sense to me this does not but there we go so you click here you can either clear the multi-chain or you can remove the selected multi so i'm going to just remove that one for the time being interestingly it leaves this multi still in play here so we're just going to remove all programs so that clears that. So the bin is what we want here. So what we're going to do is just load up a sound from Trip. So let's let's load up Bit Blip because because why wouldn't we do that? So just going to load that up here. So yeah, that's more than enough of that for this video. So to be able to access this here via a program change, we need to save it as a multi. So this is where you've got a bit more. A bit more work to do, unfortunately. So you click here, save multi program as. You give it a name. So I'm just going to call it bit blip because why wouldn't I? And then if you want to, you can add all the attributes. Now, whether you add the attributes uh, is, is up to you. Obviously, that's a fair bit of work to do that. Um, the way that I tend to get around not doing this, but so I know that I can filter my things is that I just put the rating as being five stars because then I know that's something I created. That's not me thinking everything I've done is amazing. It just means that if I filter by rating, 
if it's five star, most of the things I've created are going to come up without me having to set a whole load of attributes that I really don't care about in this particular context. Obviously, if you're programming these to give to somebody else or produce them, etc., or use them a lot with this kind of lookup, then you'd you'd fill in all these attributes, but we're not going to do that. So there we say bit blip. So that is now a multi, even though it's a singly, which we can now load up. So we click that. Now you need to make sure you've got all selected here because sometimes it'll be an HS factory and you need to make sure factory and user are selected. And once you do, you can select them. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the way this filters because you have to drill down, but there we go. So there we see bit blip and then you can just load that up. So that's now loaded as that program change there. And now if we send program change one, we'll go to upright piano. So we see we've loaded up upright and piano. And then if we then send number two to get multi one, we get bit blip. So there's my take on how to use program changes in Halin Sonic 7. So while there is a bit of overhead in terms of creating those multi patches to allow you to use the program changes, I'd imagine that you're probably going to be using maybe the same thing. So it's not something you're going to be using a lot anyway. So it's it's not the end of the world and it does allow you to do that. So you could do it in a live situation if you if you wanted to do that. I'm not actually sure what the precise use case was for this but at least it's something that does work. I'd just like to declare that none of this was created in any way by any form of artificial intelligence, but maybe it should have been. Anyway, as ever, if you found the video useful, please like, comment, and consider subscribing, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.